What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to give you the best settings for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Of course, I play on PS4. I know if you play on console, you're going to see all the same settings that I'm seeing. If you play on PC, you guys do have some different things than we do. But hopefully this will kind of give you an idea of some things that you might be looking to change up. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. As of right now, horizontal stick sensitivity is 5. Vertical is still at default at 4. I've only been playing the game for a couple days, of course. Uh, usually, every COD, I usually run 6-6. Six, six. I'm assuming that's going to stay the same this year, but of course I will make an updated video if any of these settings do change. But right now, 5-4 is working out well for me. But this is pretty much one of those things, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, when it comes to low zoom sensitivity, this is, applies to anything with a 4 times or lower scope. I'm running this on .72. In case you did not know, as you can see across the bottom, it says back, reset, reset tab, and select. If you do hit select, you can change this value to whatever number you want. So if you wanted it to be .90, It'll do that, and if you wanted it at 0.72, it'll do that. Um, if you go left or right with your touchpad or thumbstick, it'll run up the value by 5, so usually you're going to see like 80, 85, 90. Sometimes it'll just skip and go 80 to 90, so if you're wanting a more precise number, you can type that in manually. Um, this is something that has changed between Call of Duty games. In the past, I had ran this, I think in Black Ops 4, on 0 0.90. Modern Warfare last year, I ran this on 0.75. I started out with 0 0.70 this time, have bumped up to 0 0.72. This is one of those things, I play until it starts to feel a little bit slow when I'm ADSing. If I get in a gunfight and I feel like it's too slow, I feel like I'm starting to get beat, you know, because my ADS is too slow at distance or medium range, I will bump this up by a value or two. I'm assuming this is probably once another one of those is going to change eventually, kind of like the horizontal and vertical sensitivity. But as of right now, 0.72 is working out very well for me. You might want to go up to 0 0.80 if it feels too slow or even 0.90. But of course, the default is one. A lot of people like to play on one, but just kind of whatever works for you. Personally, I like a slower ADS sensitivity on the low zoom. Now, when it comes to the high zoom, this is anything with a, uh, a magnification scope of four times or stronger. I leave this at default because the only time I'm using a scope that large is if I'm sniping. And I like to be able to move that sniper when I'm, you know, ADS because this is a one shot kill. You're going to have to be quick. So. I like to leave that at one. Now, when it comes to button layout, I use bumper jumper tactical. A lot of people like to use stick and move. Uh, the reason I use this is I don't have a scuff controller anymore. It broke before Modern Warfare came out. I did have a back button for my PS4. Once I learned that the PS5 was not going to allow you to use that back button attachment, and of course they may make one in the future, I was like, I'm going to try to get out of the habit of using you know buttons on the back. Try to get out of the habit of my hands just automatically wanting to push those buttons to jump or to reload or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I decided to go back to Old Faithful. Before I ever had a back button, before I ever had a scuff, I always used bumper jumper tactical. Like I said, a lot of people use stick and move. If you've never used either of these, if you just use default button layouts, in my opinion, Bumper Jumper Tactical and Stick and Move are the closest thing you can get to having a scuff or a you know, back button or a controller of some sort with the buttons on the back without actually having one. I do play flipped. I like to shoot with R1, L1. When it comes to inverted look and controller vibration, I left those alone. I have not touched those. Uh, aim, sight, or aim down sight assist. I have left this at default. Slow down and strafing aim assist. Left that at default. Airborne Mantle Behavior. This is on automatic when you load up the game. This will mean if you're around any kind of thing that you can mantle, you're automatically going to mantle that object. I turn this on to manual. I do not want to be mantling something by accident. I hate when I try to jump shot and, you know, you mantle over something that you're close to. I hate when I'm trying to, you know, strafe and shoot someone. Maybe I'm kind of on a head glitch and sometimes it will mantle over that. I like to be able to choose when I'm going to jump, so if you're not a fan of that automatic mantle idea, turn this to mantle, uh, turn this to manual, uh, there's a lot of M, sorry, and then turn the ground mantle behavior to on press. Aim down sight behavior, I left alone, uh, is default, steady aim behavior the same. Armor behavior is on apply one, I put to apply all, now there's only one set of, you know, like one thing of armor you can get in game, of course that is a score streak. Uh, this is more mainly for people that play uh, Modern Warfare that you want to be able to apply all your armor pieces at once. You don't have to do one at a time. So just keep that in mind if you are a Warzone player when that is released for, or when that is released into Black Ops Cold War. But like I said, it is still handy for the armor that you, armor plates that you do get in multiplayer as a score streak if you are running them. Uh, aimed uh, attack vehicle control mode. I have aim based uh, stick layout. I use default left stick. Minimum input threshold is at zero. I really don't have any problem with drift on my left stick. I don't like the dead zone on there, so I just go to zero. 
Uh, the max input threshold for the left side is 99. Now when it comes to the right stick minimum input, I'm running this on 5. I am using a controller that's about a year old here on PS4. So pretty long life for me personally. I usually wear the sticks out on a PS4 controller within 4 or 5 months most of the time. But I've had this one for about a year. It is starting to drift a little. So I'm at 5. I may have to go up to like 8, 10, even higher. If you have a controller uh, that likes to drift a lot, when you're aim, aim down sights, it still moves. Your character walks on his own. You may want to change that right stick minimum input to work to help out with that drift on your controller. When it comes to the max input threshold on the right stick is 99. Uh, controller sounds, of course, this is left to default and disabled. Auto move is also disabled. Auto sprint is disabled. Uh, sprint behavior is toggle. Sprint cancels reload. This was something I used to really like when they added this in the settings. I used to always, of course, the old classic YY triangle triangle to cancel my reload. But when I started adding this option into settings, I used to always use Sprint cancels reload. But this year, I feel like it's just odd feeling. I didn't like it in the beta. I tried it out when the game was released. I still don't like it, so I had it disabled as well. Uh, parachute auto deploy, I have that enabled. Of course, you can disable that. Probably the best idea. Uh, I don't have anything right now that I'm using a parachute for, really, besides Dirty Bomb, and I haven't played a lot of that. Uh, when it comes to equipment behavior, I have hold. And when it comes to reload behavior, I have tap to reload. Of course, you may want to change this if you are a Warzone player, depending on, you know, how you want to, you know, either interact with things in the world to pick them up or tap to reload or hold to reload, whatever the case may be. When it comes to graphics here on the console, I always run my safe area small as I can. Now you cannot change this in game like you could in the past. So if you're on console, you'll have to go on PS4 anyway. I'm sure it's probably the close to the same thing on PS5. I'm not sure about on Xbox, but you will have to go down to your sound and screen. Then you'll have to go to your display area settings and then you can enlarge or shrink this. Like I said, I go small as you can get. This will make the HUD a lot smaller. This will make the HUD a lot tighter, a lot cleaner. I like that personally. Some people like to go ahead and stretch it out. I do play on a monitor to me. The tighter it is, the better, I, I think, personally, because it will now make some words a little bit smaller, a little harder to read, but it doesn't stretch everything out on a monitor, and I really like the look of that, personally. Um, when it comes to colorblind modes, I actually am not colorblind, but I do like uh, this colorblind setting here, uh, Tritantinopia. Uh, Tritanopia, I'll, I'll say it correctly in a minute, hopefully. It will change these colors. Of course, it changes your color to yellow on the mini map by default. The ally color by default is this darker blue. I can change it to a lighter blue. When it comes to the enemy color by default, I cannot remember which one it is. It's this dark pink down here, excuse me. I changed it to this pink here. You might want to go a little bit lighter, but personally, I really like the look of this. It's hard to see people in game and that pink name over their head on an enemy's name is really, really nice in my opinion. Then of course the party color is this dark green. I changed it up to a little bit of a a lighter green. I was trying to brighten everything up to make it a little bit easier to see everything in game. And that is one thing, in my opinion, that really helps with being able to see enemies, see your teammates, kind of see everything. Field of view, I'm on a day one OG PS4, so I play on 90. Uh, I feel like this old school PS4, the original PS4, does not really work very well above 90. I tried it on 100. I still feel like it drops frames. If you're on PS4 Pro, um, I would probably recommend, or an Xbox One X, or a new gen console uh, or PC, of course, I would recommend going 100 plus. Uh, start out at 100, go 105, 110, all the way up to 120. Whatever's comfortable, whatever doesn't allow your game to start dropping frames or screen tearing. Uh, but I would definitely recommend starting out with 100 if you're on something besides an old school PS4. If you're like me, you're playing like day one PS4, 90 is about as best as you can get, in my opinion. It just does not work very well past 90. Uh, ADS field of view. You can have this independent or affected. This is a pretty cool setting, in my opinion, uh, opinion, something new we have not seen in Call of Duty before. If you have this on independent, aiming down sight will zoom the field of view to its intended value. If you have this on, on affected, aim down sights will zoom to a value closer to your field of view setting. This does not apply to zooms with a magnification of over four times. I have this on affected. Um, I did try independent. Um, I don't know. I feel like affected felt more fluid. It looked better in my opinion from going from moving around to ADS. You might want to play around with that to see what works for you. But personally, I like the affected a lot better when it comes to brightness. Now I do play on a monitor that I have settings on. And so I can always turn up the brightness in games and not really wash out the color of the game. Depending on what kind of monitor you're playing on TV, you're playing on, this will change for you. 
I play on 75 and personally with 75 and uh, the colorblind mode settings and the tighter safe uh, safe area, I really feel like the game's a lot brighter. I can see things a lot better than I could in the beta or was when I started playing a few days ago before I changed these settings. Everything seemed a little bit dark, a little bit grainy, and it was hard to see enemies in, in certain places. And personally, I think this is a lot better now with these settings. So you might want to try those out if you're having a hard time seeing people at distance or just seeing people in general. Now, when it comes to motion blur, of course, that is disabled. Never leave this on. Now, it does look cool if you're playing the campaign. It does look cool if you're making a montage. But most of the time, if you're playing, uh, motion blur will absolutely screw you up. So I would definitely recommend disabling that. When it comes to audio, master volume is 100. Music volume is zero. I don't like to have the music volume in game. Uh, of course, I do make YouTube videos, so that is also another issue. But I've always turned down the music volume. Uh, it, it is... It's really good sounding, but at the same time, I don't like it going on in game because it's just something else to add to all the other noise that will, uh, you know, drown out footsteps, gunfire, whatever the case may be. Sound effects volume, of course, this is going to be gunfire, footsteps, that is going to be at 100. Dialogue volume, this could be good, probably a little bit lower. I, I've not changed it yet. Of course, this is going to be, uh, you know, the call outs in game from your teammates or, of course, you know, the person that is commentating over the match. Uh, that is at 75. You could go a bit lower. There are a few cues you might want to hear, you know, UAVs up, enemy kill streaks coming in, you know, uh, an AI or, you know, a teammate's character calling out a, an area or someone's at. You might want to hear those things. Some people prefer to have that completely off. Some people like to have it higher or lower. I'm running at 75. I kind of like it right there as of right now. But like I said, it probably could go a bit lower. Cinematic volume, which is really nice. Uh, once again, if you're playing a campaign, the cinematic volume, the things you hear is really, really cool. But cinematic volume is not going to affect footsteps or gunfire. So I always turn this down. Once again, this is something else, some noise in the background, kind of like the music that's so going to drown out other things like footsteps and gunfire. So I'll go ahead and turn that down to 20. Audio presets. I've been kind of messing around with a lot of different things. I do use Astro A40s. I do have the Gen 3 ones. I don't have the newer ones. These are the uh, Gen 3 TRs. Personally, for me, uh, right now, I'm not running any new presets. Uh, I had some presets you know, that I used in the Astro Command Center uh, back in Modern Warfare. I put everything back to default with this. I'm just running on the tournament mode with the Super Bass Boost. It does sound really good. I've also tried out a few other things. I do like Treyarch Mix. I also like the High Boost and the Bass Boost. There's several different options here to me that sound really good, but as of right now, the Super Bass Boost is working really well. I think this is that kind of Super Crunch idea from older Black Ops games, but keep in mind, everyone hears at different frequencies. A lot of people loved High Boost in Modern Warfare. I could not hear footsteps with High Boost. You know that I always turned it on. It's more of a bass boost kind of sound. So just kind of mess with these in game. You might want to go in with a game of bots. To me, if you can hear your own footsteps pretty loud, you're going to be able to hear other people's footsteps pretty loud. So just make sure that you have this kind of set to what you're hearing is, you know, at. You know, somebody, like I said, everybody hears the sounds differently. Um, hit marker sounds, of course, is enabled. Voice chat, I have this disabled. But if you do like to talk to people in game, you can turn that on. I'm usually always in a party, either by myself or playing with friends. So I just usually don't leave the voice chat on unless I'm playing something like Search and Destroy. When it comes to subtitles, this is disabled. It's a good thing to have on during the campaign, but in multiplayer, it's just annoying to have that on screen. Everything on this is like crosshair hit markers, damage base hit markers. Those are all to default. When it comes to ally health bars, I have those hidden. I don't want to see the health bars over my teammates. That gets a lot of clutter on screen. Enemy health bars, I do have to show them, so I want to be able to see the enemy's health bar. Uh, player's name, you can change this. A lot of people like abbreviated. I just use full name. Uh, the compass I do have hidden. To me, now that we have the mini map back, I don't really see a point in having the compass unless you are playing in just a, a random group of people like online. You know, you want to have a call out. You can, of course, say, you know, the compass direction. Also good for Warzone, but personally for me with the mini map back in multiplayer, I don't really feel a need to have the compass on. Floating damage numbers. Of course, this is for zombies. I do have that enabled. And the rest of everything down here I have left to default. Now, when it comes to keyboard, well, guys, I hope these settings kind of helped you out. Leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know what settings you're running. Let me know if these settings are helping you. Uh, let me know if you changed anything. Let me know if you're using something a little bit different. Of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And be sure to check out everything down in the description. GT Racing, the community Discord, and my Twitter. 
I'll catch you all next time. Peace.